Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Don Chorus, Jorgen's Path. So the last place we left off, we had just met we had just met with Jorgen. Um, we got to know him a little bit more. We had a little daydream about him in the cafeteria, and now we're trying to find our key, and we've got Lake with us, so maybe that means Jorgen will come along too. But anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you're up. Here we go. All right. It looks like nobody from the office will be able to make it here today. We weren't prepared for the snow to start falling so early this year, and in such amounts. They said that they will come tomorrow morning, and in the meantime, I will look for your key. For today, you will have to move to another room. We don't have any single rooms left, unfortunately, but I can show you which rooms have a bed still available. We have a lot more doable double rooms than single ones, so most of the students got a room with a second bed. But maybe one of your friends still has a free bed in their room. You can ask them, but if none will have one, then you can come back here and I can find you something. She gives me an apologetic smile and points to a small basket on the counter filled with sweets. Maybe you want some? I shake my head, looking down at my paws. I want one, though. <laughs> Lake, always lightening the mood. He takes one and unwraps it, shoving it into his maw. I don't really know what to say. It's a very sudden turn of events. I have so many questions I don't even know which I should, which I should ask first. Swallowing saliva, I finally decide on one that concerns me the most right now. All my stuff is already in my room. I won't be able to retrieve anything from there until tomorrow? Oh, you're right. Wait a moment. She walks off to the utility room and returns after a short while. What was that? Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. One second. Let me uh, turn the... Uh... Yeah. There we go. Okay. She walks off to the utility room and returns after a while, carrying something in her paw. Here's the bathroom kit for you. We always keep a spare few for those who forgot to br forgot to bring their toothbrushes or soap with them. She passes me the kit, all packed inside a cloth pouch. We're really sorry about this. Can I do anything else for you now? I shake my head. If you will have any questions or problems, please come back to me and we'll try to sort it out. I'm not going anywhere, although by midnight I usually am asleep already. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Talk, thank you. She smiles at me, turns around and returns to the utility room. Are you okay, Carvin? Lake looks at me with a concerned face. Not really. That's a lot of bad news for one day. Yeah, I understand. I'd gladly let you sleep in my room if I had a free bed, but I'm already with Jorgen. Sorry. Nothing to apologize for. I'm happy that you even thought about that. I really appreciate it. I hug him closely, feeling a lot, fu a lot of fuzzy feelings for this fuzzy lion now. A lot of fuzzy, fuzzy feelings for a fuzzy lion. I surprise him with a sudden gesture, but he does not protest, hugging me back instead. He is just the right size for me to snuggle into myself comfortably. Hey, now, you're you're supposed to be with the bat. You're supposed to be with the bat, Carvin. This is nice. I could stay like that for a little longer. But it does get a bit awkward after a short while. What are you going to do now, then? I don't have an answer to his question. I don't have any idea what to do now. Apart from finding another room to stay, of course. I need to think. I'll go outside for a moment. Maybe take a short walk. Sure. Well, you know where to look for me. See you later, then. I smile and nod. See you, Lake. He waves to me and walks out of the room, his tail swaying behind him. I wish I could stay with him tonight, but there's nothing I can do. I turn around and go to the entrance door, leaving the warm and cozy guest house. Aw, oh, this is so nice. A wave of cold arctic air hits me when I exit the building, making me shiver. It's still snowing relentlessly. Chill wind blows through the tree branches like a harpist gently pulling strings. Our bus has left already, so the janitor's car is the only one standing in the front parking lot. I hope that the bus driver made it to the town without any problems. I look through the parking lot and into the woods, leaving a trail of deep paw prints in the fresh snow behind me. I inhale deeply. The air is perfectly clean and full of smells, pines and wet moss, snow and needle-covered paths. I grew up surrounded by forests, and I always loved exploring them. Some of the smells here don't seem familiar, but I still feel at home. The only thing I hear is the sound of the snow crunching under my paws and the slight whisper of the wind. I'm just on the edge of the woods, so the forest here isn't dense, and in between the branches I can see the gray sky hanging heavy above me. It feels good to be here. Living in the city, it's easy to forget how nice it is to be surrounded by nature. I take out the instant camera I still have with me from my bag, turn it on, and, holding it in my extended arms, I point the lens at my snout. Now I have to wait for it to develop. I stash it away quickly in the bag, together with the camera, and close it. <laughs> Gonna be a cutie in that picture. I close my eyes and listen to the wind. 
I silence my thoughts and switch my attention to my surroundings. Deep breaths now. In and out. Slowly. I stand still. The wind rustles the branches, blowing off the slowly accumulating snow from them. Right now the forest is still, but everything around me is brimming with life. All the bugs on the ground, all the trees around me, every tuft of moss and blade of grass. They all breathe together with me, in a steady rhythm. I am happy where I am right now. I open my eyes and I shake off the snow from my snout. If not for the temperature, I could just stand and enjoy the peaceful atmosphere, but I'm starting to feel cold. It's still nowhere as cold as it gets in Finland in winter. Thanks to the proximity of the sea, this part of the country has a mild climate, but it is not a temperature I would call comfortable. Something must be wrong with my Finnish jeans, because I much prefer warmer weather. Okay, let's see how the photo came out. Oh, it's a cutie! Yep. That's uh, cutie, alright. Well, I have to say I am proud of this one. One second, guys. There we go. It might be my favorite photo of myself yet. <laughs> Shivering a bit, I decide to keep moving. I'll feel warmer if I don't just stand in one place. Walking among the trees calmed me down, though. I feel much better now. I shake off the rest of the snow that accumulated during the short walk on my hair and turn around, walking back to the guest house. Walking much faster now, I'm back at the guest house in maybe two minutes. Ah, back in the warm inside. I walk up to one of the sofas standing in the lobby and flop onto it unceremoniously. I took some books I wanted to read with me. I'd be really happy if I had one of them with me right now. But of course, I left them back in my room. Only now it really hits me that I will not be able to use anything I left there. Including my DSLR, the books I have taken, my headphones, or even my pajamas. At least it's mildly comforting that it's only for today. And thankfully, I have my phone with me. Now that I think of it, I do have some ebooks downloaded on it, but I don't remember which ones. I take the photo out of my pocket and click the side button. The screen turns on, showing a photo of the sea that I had taken in Greece and have been using as my wallpaper ever since. Suddenly I remember something important. I haven't yet written my mother a message that we have arrived. I might be living by myself now in another country on top of that, but that just makes her more concerned about me. If I didn't write her a message, she would call me soon, and I don't feel like talking with her right now. If I told her about the key, she would just shout at me for a while and then call every few hours to get an update. I type a quick message to her. Hi, we've arrived safely. I should do. I press send and turn off the screen, leaning back and sighing. In the corner of my eye, I see movement the other side of the lobby. Turning my head in that direction, I finally notice someone sitting there on a sofa. Ah, man of mystery. I don't think I recognize him. I mean, he's a tiger like me, wearing a loose-fitting black tank top. He's sitting on a sofa in a relaxed position, looking at me. There's a certain aura of nonchalance about him. He suddenly stands up and approaches me confidently, his tail making broad swings behind him as he walks. Well, hello there. Always nice of meeting a fellow tiger. Name's Torolf. And you? I sit up before replying, feeling strangely vulnerable under his gaze. I'm... Carvin. It's nice meeting you, too. Torolf points to the spot on the sofa beside me. May I? Before I have a chance to reply, he sits down beside me, taking a relaxed position again. Wow, he really is forward. So, tell me about yourself. What do you study? Um, I'm from Finland, and I moved here this year. I'm studying cognitive science. Oh, a freshman. How cute. It's a shame we're not in the same department. I nod meekly, somewhat at a loss for words. A shame, yeah. So, what are you studying? Experimental biology, but that's not really interesting. Better tell me where I can find you, usually. Um, on the campus, I guess? I live in a dormitory, so I spend most of my time at the university on the university ground. I live further away from the city center. I have my own flat. Hey, you can visit me sometime. You're cute, you know. He winks at me. Am I being flirted with? I don't think anyone has ever flirted with me before, let alone this openly. It feels... Yeah, that's like okay. nice. I don't even know how to respond to him, so instead I just stare at him. Whoa, I'm really empathetic sometimes. It certainly flatters me, though. He is good-looking, I have to admit. He has a nice, lean body, and his clothes show it off nicely. I gulp. Suddenly, another figure enters the lobby. Lake? He notices us and starts walking in our direction, and Torolf stands up to greet him. Hey, Torolf! I got you your jacket! Oh, hi, Carvin! What a surprise! You two know each other? Now we do. We just met and chatted for a bit. Thank you, Lake. You're really invaluable. Lake passes in the jacket and a key. 
Oh, so they are friends. Good enough friends at 12 Cent Lake to fetch him his jacket. Frankly, I don't know much about Lake's friends. When I, visit, when I was visiting him, he was always either alone or with his roommate. I'm kind of surprised to see him being friends with this tiger, though. He looks older than Lake for sure. Must be a senior already. How did Lake get to know him? We were just going outside for a walk together, but I left my jacket in my room. It's been nice talking with you, Garvin. I'll catch you later, okay? Sure. Have a nice walk, you two. Thank you, Carvin. If you want to go to the sauna after we're done, I'm definitely up for it. They leave through the entrance door, and so I'm left alone in the lobby. Phew. I lean back on the sofa and relax, finally. I didn't even notice I got so tense. This was really something else. Trolf, what an interesting guy. He didn't really tell me much about himself, did he? Just that he studies experimental biology and has his own flat, and that he finds me cute. I blush again. Well, he is handsome, too. He told me he'll catch me later, so I should expect to meet him again. I hope it won't be as awkward as our pretty one-sided conversation now was. I close my eyes and let my thoughts wander. For a moment, I thought about opening an e-book, but I don't feel like reading right now. Just a bit too much has happened lately. So, until the end of the day, I have to find myself another room to stay in. I could always ask Miko. He for sure would agree. Things still are a bit weird between us, though, especially after the three-year gap in our friendship. I still have the whole day to ask others. I've already managed to make some, some new friends here. It could be a good occasion to befriend someone closer. Yeah, I don't have to make any decisions now. I'll leave that for the evening. Hmm, but what should I do now? Jorgen and Travis! There we go. Terrace. Not feeling like sitting in the guest house confined by its walls, I exit it once again and step outside, taking a lungful of the crisp air. There we go. We're gonna get some quality time. Instead of going into the forest again, I want to walk around the guest house to see it from other angles. Turning right, I start walking along its wooden walls. I'm still in awe of this building. It feels like it's every single it feels like it's every single detail was carefully thought out. Walking around another corner, I finally see the terrace that Coach mentioned earlier. It's big. Bigger than I expected. Half of it is covered in stone, the other half is hidden under a roof. On the wall there is a there is also a door that leads back to the guest house. Under the roof, I see two other students, but I'm only familiar with one of them. Jorgen. And a raccoon I haven't seen before. Raccoons rarely live in this part of the world. I wonder if he's from here. They're both sitting on a bench standing next to the entrance to the guest house. Jorgen is simply sitting and looking at some point in the distance, holding a book in his paw, while the other student is playing some game on a paw-held console. If they notice me approaching, they do nothing to acknowledge my presence, so I call out to them. Hey there, what are you doing here? Carvin, so we meet again. Only now I notice that he has a very soft voice and speaks with almost no accent, and there's a certain elegance to the way he pronounces words. He greets me with a slight nod, while the smaller animal notices me finally and pauses his game. Oh, hello there. I think we don't know each other yet. So your name is Carvin, yes? I'm Travis, and I came out here to play. It's nicer staying here than inside. Yeah, that's me. It's nice to meet you too, Travis. You're a raccoon, yes? Are you from here, or did you just move for studies? No, I'm not a raccoon. I'm a tanuki. See this tail? No stripes. He smirks, lifting his long, fluffy tail. No stripes indeed. I feel stupid now. Don't, wor don't worry, that's a common mistake. I don't mind. And I was born in the U.S., but my mom is from Japan, so I'm half American, half Japanese. I smile meekly, still feeling stupid over that mistake. He might say whatever he wants, but it's always rude to mistake someone's species. Ask Jorgen about his book. What is that book you're reading? Jorgen looks at me through his thick glasses from behind his book. It's a novel by Snoutgard, a Norwegian writer I really enjoy. He blends existentialism with naturalism, and his books are often semi-biographical. He constructs them from mundane details, but together they create coherent portraits of life as a whole. This is often based on the radical self-exposure and self-humiliation he's employing in his books, but this makes it all only more interesting. It was really groundbreaking when it came out. The sheer amount of mundane details he put in those books is insane, but somehow it all works. Um, okay, that sounds fun. I'll check him out for sure. No, I won't. I understood maybe half of what Jorgen was saying. Next to him, Travis tries to, tries to stifle a chuckle without success. Ignoring us, the bat turns his gaze from me back to the book. Right now, I'm at the fragment where he describes in detail how he and his horse friend were taking a piss together in a forest when they were kids. I love how unpoetic and straightforward this is. Okay, that's a bit more than I wanted to know. 
Jorgen seems really fascinated by what he's reading, though. Actually, he's almost smiling. Almost. Jorgen, you know, I don't really think you're convincing, Carvin. Jorgen puts a, gives him a stern look from behind his book. What do you mean? I mean, that everything you've said only convinced us both not to pick up this book, like, ever. Faith Jorgen. Not really. Actually, it sounded interesting. Norwegian existentialism blended with naturalism is definitely my type of literature. Jorgen gives me a suspicious look. You know, Carvin, you don't have to be nice just for the sake of it. I appreciate honesty more than politeness. Um, I'll make sure to read it and tell you what I think of it, okay? Jorgen simply nods before returning to reading the book. I'll leave you now and let you read, though. He is so much he is so much into it right now that he barely notices me. Bye, Carvin. It was nice chatting with you. I wave to them both and return to the warm and cozy guest house. Let's go to Miko's room. Let's see. I walk around the guest house aimlessly for a while, and my paws lead me to the residential area. Suddenly, I realize that I'm standing in front of the door to Miko's room. Miko invited me for a visit earlier. I guess I could come in now for a while. All I'll have to do is knock on the door, and I'll be greeted by my school friend again. But it takes me a few seconds of hesitation before I finally do. Just a moment! I can faintly hear Miko's voice from behind the door. I don't have to wait long. After several seconds, the door opens and Miko's smiling face greets me. Oh, it's you, Carvin. Good to see you. I enter the room and he closes the door after me. The whole floor is cluttered with a multitude of cables and boxes filled with blinking lights arranged in a semicircle. On the floor in front of everything lays a pillow, like a pilot's seat before the cockpit. The room itself has the same furnishing as mine, apart from having twin beds instead of just one, yet thanks to the drawn curtains and all the gear, it has a completely different feel. Oh, wow. Miko, did you really bring all that stuff with you? Where did you even fit it? Miko just smiles, completely ignoring my question. I'm just finishing working on a track. I have to work on the drum pattern. It sounds a bit too repetitive at the moment. He returns to his instruments, sitting back on the floor in front of all the gear. He presses a button and the music starts to play from a small speaker he has on the desk. I watch, mesmerized as the lights pulse in rhythm with the music. You know, you can sit here with me if you want. He moves himself to the side of the huge pillow so that there is space for two on it. Oh, sure. I sit down next to him, leaning against him out of necessity, and he presses back against me. I can feel the heat radiating from his small, woven body. The music fills the room slowly, transforming the space around us. I close my eyes and let the room become our vessel, in which we travel through imaginary landscapes, getting lost in bubbly sounds that reverberate through the wooden floor. Next to me, Miko continues to work on the track, playing around with the gear laid out in front of him. What are you doing exactly? I'm using this groove box's built-in option, which lets me trigger only a parama... parama... blah... a parama... parametrized... a parametrized percentage of notes, because the pattern is partially randomized, introducing some variation into it. I'm also manipulating samples to get the sound I want, and I'm trying different timings with the pattern itself, too. I do everything on this Proton Groove Box. I only have to program MIDI signals to communicate with the rest of the gear here. These two are external synthesizers, as Proton has only a sampler built in. I also have a few effects pedals I like to use, and of course, a mixer for all that. I nod, pretending to understand. Finally, Miko turns his head to look at me. So, Carvin, what's up? Enjoying the trip? Yeah, quite, though it's been rather calm so far. I can't say it's uneventful, though. So, I was just walking around the guest house, and then I thought that I could visit you. I didn't expect you to be working on music now. I hope I'm not bothering you. And I, well, lost the key to my room, so I'm kind of without one for now. Most of my things are there, so I'm not really happy with that. Oh, Carvin, that's awful. You, not you notified the staff, right? What are you going to do now? Yeah, I went to the front desk to ask them the same question. Let's say that for now, that I don't know yet. No? They didn't have a spare or anything? There is one, but in the office in the hut in the town, and apparently the car can't come through now. Hmm. I'm sure everything will be fine, Carvin. Miko stands up, presses some button, and the music stops. Okay, I think I'm done. So, what do you think of the track? I like it. I like what I've heard so far. Can you play it again? He clicks something on one of the synths, and the track starts playing again. It makes me feel like I'm sitting on a cloud and looking at the colorful patches of the ground below. There's purple, green, and yellow, and some turquoise, too. The land moves below us, slowly, and from time to time we fly into some other pink clouds. 
No, no, it's midnight and the full moon floods the path with a silvery glow. But there's definitely turquoise and purple, you're right. Back in middle school, Miko used to say he had a slight synesthesia, so he literally saw music as colors, or at least he claimed to. In any case, I like it a lot. Miko gives me a smile, blushing slightly, and turns off the music. Thanks. I've started working on it here after we arrived. I wanted it to, in a way, be a snapshot of what I felt in the bus on our way here, looking at the views and daydreaming. I remember Miko always liked the idea of documenting everything around him. Although, usually in unusual ways. Alright guys, I'm going to stop it there for now. There was a little bit of uh, stuff for Jorgen. We're going to have to get to more very, very soon. I'm very eager to see how a night with Jorgen plays out. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!